Okay, here I'm going to provide a quick overview of carbohydrate basics, kind of the general run through. Even though we may think of them as bread and pasta, uh, we're looking at them a little bit more from a molecular level here in this presentation. So first off, carbohydrates often referred to as sugars, and a, they do fit that general category. They provide the building materials and energy storage, and this is why we typically associate them with um, bread, because that is a pretty dense uh, energy storage uh, food item. There are molecules that contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That's where you get the name carbohydrates. A, the key part is not only do they contain those elements, but they are in a one to two to one ratio. That's one carbon atom to two hydrogens to one oxygen um, atom ratio. That's what defines them as carbohydrates. And there's two main types. There's simple and there's complex. And we're looking here at some more complex ones in the image uh, with the bread and the pasta. Now looking at comparing those simple and what defines a simple carbohydrate, well, simple carbohydrates are called monosaccharides and disaccharides. Mono meaning one, one sugar, saccharides meaning sugar, so one sugar they, means that they consist of one subunit. You may have heard of glucose or fructose or galactose. These are all monosaccharides. A little bit bigger here would be disaccharides, di meaning two, Saccharides meaning sugar, and they consist of two subunits. So for example, sucrose are two monomers that are linked together. It's a galactose and a glucose linked together. Uh, we see here um, lactose is actually two glucose molecules linked together forming this disaccharide. Both of these fall into the category of simple carbohydrates. As we get a little bit further, we get a little more into the complex carbohydrates. So a complex carbohydrate consists of long polymers of sugar subunits. And poly meaning many, that could be three, four to hundreds, literally as we can see here, polysaccharides, many sugars linked together. Uh, they all consist of potentially those monomer units that we saw there. Uh, it's just many of them being linked together, making these complex carbohydrates. Now here's just a quick look at a uh, monosaccharide, disaccharide, and polysaccharide. Now monosaccharide, just as an example, is glucose. Disaccharide here, we have sucrose. Again, they're linked together, not just two monosaccharides hanging out together, they're actually linked. And the last one down here is a polysaccharide, and that's amylose here. You can see many, many of these units linked together is the key part. Now when we're looking at these complex carbohydrates, they fall into many categories. So for example, we have starch being an example. Now starch provides energy storage in plants, uh, so it's an important energy storage molecule for the plant world. Uh, glycogen here provides energy storage in animals, so they're both complex carbohydrates, but there's different forms for different organisms. So cellulose is found in the plant walls. That's what gives them their strength and rigidity. Also, um, high amounts of energy that we don't really, as humans, not able to break down all that well versus other animals that have a more complex digestive system are. And chitin is found in cell walls of fungi and in insects and exoskeletons. So here we have a blue crab that has a lot of chitin in it. Uh, it's a very tense, dense outer shell. And that is a carbohydrate, but again, we're typically going after the meat on the inside because we can lack the ability to break down the de great degree of complexity of the chitin that's in the shell. Now within these carbohydrates, uh, they function for energy, raw materials, energy storage, structural components. There's a lot of ways uh, that our body can utilize and metabolize uh, carbohydrates. And this is glucose as an example. Remember, that's a monosaccharide, a single sugar. Uh, starches, cellulose, and glycogen are other examples. Keep in mind that starch and cellulose are much more complex, and we, our digestive system may have a harder time breaking those down because they are so complex. Getting into isomers, so looking at the different molecules or molecular formulas here. Well, when we're looking at carbohydrates, this is actually the same molecular formula. So a lot of people initially look at this and say, oh, they're different molecular formulas, they're changing. It's actually the same molecular formula uh, in other uh, molecule, but has a different chemical structure. So it's the same formula, the same number of atoms, but organized in a different way. Again, they both have the same number of atoms in each element, but different arrangements of those atoms. And we kind of see that taking shape here, where there is this change, uh, there is this different shape here. Again, same atoms, they're just kind of jumbled in different ways. 
Now, structural isomers we see here, uh, N-butane, isobutane, and kind of the carbons are kind of highlighted here in the bright colors. We can see that if you count up the number of atoms, they're all the same, the same ratio, but they look very different. They're structurally different. Now we get into carbohydrates, we start talking about what's called cis and trans. This is cis stands for adjacent, both on the same side and trans is across from. So what makes this important is if you start looking at things, and I have some couple examples here, if you have a molecule that only has a single bond in the middle, well, what that's going to cause is this molecule can turn and spin, and that's not going to really lend itself to being cis or trans. If you look at the cis and trans carbohydrates here a little bit closer now, you could see that over here there's a double bond. What that double bond allows for is a fixed point. So it can't rotate like I just showed you. So here in a double bond, we have the cis form. So here's that double bond, and these carbon atoms and these hydrogen atoms, for example, they really they can't turn. You can move slightly here, but they can't turn. Therefore, we have cis being on the same side. And we also need that double bond here. We can see the difference. We also need that double bond here for trans, because again, these can't rotate. So therefore, we do have them evident on uh, either side here. So this would be the trans form here. So again, our trans form, and this would be our cis form. So if we're looking at comparing to the pictures I have just behind us. This would be the transform. This would be the cis form there. If I make myself a little bit smaller, we could see that how clearly um, we could see that difference uh, here. So again, that transform being uh, evident here and that cis form located right here. So again, that difference uh, there, all because of that double bond fixing those um, atoms in space. Again, if we had those single bond causes an issue, causes spinning, not going to set up well for cis or trans here. Now within our nomenclature, we have um, what's called D-glucose and L-glucose, and that's basically referring to the organization of the hydroxide group here. So when we're looking at sugar nomenclature for sugars, more than one chiral center, and I'll talk about chiral centers in a second, it's a basically a carbon molecule with four different atoms attached to it. We see the D and the L refers to the asymmetric C, that's the carbon, uh, from the aldehyde or ketone group. We see an aldehyde or a ketone, looking at how these are being arranged. The most natural occurring sugars are the D isomers. So our bodies have enzymes that are very dependent on shape, and that D glucose is something our body might be able to metabolize, where that L glucose, we may lack those enzymes to be able to break that down efficiently. That chiral center, as I mentioned, uh, molecules consist of at least one carbon atom and four non-identical things attached to it, substituents. So this is allowing this chiral, this four different attachment points, allows there to be a kind of a left side and a right side, a difference amongst those. So that chiral center is that carbon with the four different items attached to it. Optical isomers, uh, mirror images are not the same. So this is an important correlation here. These are mirror images of one another, but they're not the same. They're a different arrangement of the four different groups around that center atom that we see located right here. D and L sugars are mirror images of one another. They have the same name, D-glucose and L-glucose, but different enzymes would be required to break those down. Well, lastly here, to kind of help uh, prove that mirror images are not the same, your left and right hand are not the same. You're like, well, of course they are. But if you hold them up to, to one another here, and you'll notice that they don't match up. If you do this, you say, oh, look, now they match up. Well, one's facing one way, one's facing the other. Here, you're seeing my palm. Here, you're seeing the back of my hand. Those are not the same. Or for them to be identical, you need to be able to be able to lay over one another perfectly. And you can see here, both back of my hands, the thumbs are not matching up. Think about shaking someone's hand, for example. That just goes to prove uh, that you know your left and right hand, while they all have the same component, Components are not identical copies of one another. They are mirror images, and that's a very important distinction 